Welcome back to Twilight Imperium 4th Edition. All right, let's continue on with round three. Up first will be the Sardic Noir to take an action, then the Arboric, and then Federation of Soul. So uh, let's see what the Sardic uh, bugs are going to do. Oh, and I do have one correction. That's why I piled up all this stuff here. Almost forgot. Uh, in this system, uh, last episode, I uh, left a note, the Sardic had to place the, the command token from strategy into this system. I actually took it right off the board, so that's been fixed. So they can't activate that system again. All right, let's go over to Sardic. They're going to start off this episode with some kind of action. And the action that the Sardic are going to take is the technology action. So what that means so they get to research one technology, basically for nothing, and they could also spend six resources to research another one. As a secondary ability for the uh, Arboric Federation of Soul, we can spend a token from our strategy pool, four resources, to research a technology. And so, uh, I have to think about that. The Arboric, they do have a token uh, in the strategy, but they do not have four resources. They cannot take advantage of this. We as the Federation of Soul can. Uh, I have to think about that though, but let's go ahead and uh, we're going to do the Sardic Noir. They may do two technologies. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to take a look at their stuff and see what they want to do. All right, so big long shot here because we want to be able to read the card. So for free, they are going to um, research anti-mass deflectors. Your ships can move through, uh, into, and through asteroid fields. When other players' units use space cannon against your units, apply a minus one result to each die roll. That's the first one they're going to research. Let's put that up here. Uh, the second one is going to cost them six resources uh, and then they can do a second one. So they're going to exhaust this planet for three re resources and this one for three resources. That's six resources. Now they're going to research gravity drive. It has a prerequisite of one blue technology and they just researched it. So they can have this one which says after you activate a system, apply plus one to move value of one of your ships during the tactical action. All right, that's giving them another blue technology. So they pumped up their technology pretty quickly. Uh, and now, I think as Federation of Sol, we are going to get a technology. So let's go down to their area. And we have to spend a uh, command token from our strategy pool and four resources to get a technology. All right, so we're going to spend four resources right here on our home world four resources. All right, and we are going to get a technology. And I'm going to turn the camera off, fish through my units here. Uh, actually, I don't think I need to because we have two green and two blue technologies and we want to research uh, our special uh, units. Now, the special units we have are the advanced carrier, which take two blue prerequisites, or the uh, spec ops to advance ground forces. I think we're going to go ahead and research the Advanced Carrier 2. Uh, it can sustain damage. So our carriers are two hits now to take uh, damage them. They cost three combat nine. They have a movement now of two and a capacity of eight. And what we do with that is we place it over our old carrier uh, system here. And that upgrades our carriers. So that's really good. We're halfway to getting our special... Uh, our secret objective, this one anyway, which is own two faction technologies. If we update our spec ops at a later round, we'll be able to claim that. All right, that was the action for the Sarduk. Up next will be an action for the Arborek. And yes, before we do that, why don't I actually spend the token from the command token from the strategy to do that before I forget. All right, so with that, now it's time for the Arboric to have an action. All right, the Arboric are going to use the Warfare strategy card. And it basically says, remove one of your command tokens from the game board, then gain one command token. And they can redistribute any number of command tokens on their sheet. As a secondary ability, uh, the other races, the Sardic and the Federation of Soul, can spend a token from their strategy pool. Of course, Federation of Soul doesn't have any more. Uh, and use the production ability of one of your space docks in your home system. Which is actually pretty interesting. I'm not sure if the Sardak want to do it. But let's go ahead and uh, at least do the first part of this for the Arboric. So they're going to remove a command token from somewhere on the board. And put it into their 
uh, command spaces and rearrange them any way they want. And the command token they are going to remove is the one right here where they had just newly built the Dreadnought, two destroyers and a cruiser last time. So let's find out where they're going to put this on their board. All right, they're just going to simply put it here on the tactic uh, section of their board. Uh, now they can redistribute anything they want, so they could take a fleet one out here, but if they do that, they're going to have to destroy some ships. They're not going to bother doing it. So that's them finished doing that. Uh, now it says the secondary ability, they can spend a token from your strategy pool to use a production ability of one of your space docks. Now the Sardak only have one command token in strategy. Do they want to do that? Uh, I don't think they are going to bother. So that's going to be it. That's the action for the Arboric. Up next, Federation of Soul. All right, for Federation of Soul, we have only one token left in our tactics. Now we could do trade action, but I think we're going to go ahead and do this action right now. And so we're going to do a tactical action. Let's see what we're going to place it on the board and what we're going to do. All right. Well, we're actually going to build some units in our home system. Pretty much every other one of our, uh, our space docks has already have an activation token on it. All right. What are we going to do here? Well, we can build four. We can build six units here. Let's go back to the Federation of Soul and uh, see what we're going to build. All right. Well, Federation of Soul, we got these new advanced carrier twos. We're going to build one of them. That's going to cost us three resources two for this planet, one trade good, and that's tapping us out. But it is going to build us one of our advanced carriers. So let's place it on our homeworld location. All right, so we build another, our, an advanced carrier here, which is pretty good stuff. And now we've actually have all four of our carriers on the board, which is nice because they can take two hits to destroy. And uh, they have a capacity of eight, so we can carry a ton of fighters and ground troops. All right. That was the action. Oh, and I forgot to flip over the Warfare card. Oops, I'll do it right now. That was the action for Federation of Soul. Up next again is the Sardak Noir, or Noir. All right, and the Sardak Noir are going to take a tactical action. So we take a token out of there, and let's see where they're going to place it on the board and where they're going to move and or build units. And they have a nice space dock right here, so they're going to place their command token in here. And it has a capacity of two, so they can build four units there. So let's go back to their player mat and uh, let's see what four units they're going to build. And it looks like they're gearing up for war. So they're going to build a Dreadnought, a cruiser, and two destroyers. And it's going to cost them eight. And that's basically going to flip over one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight that exhausts all of their planets they have none left let's put their forces on the board and i completely had a brain fade they only have a capacity of three so they already have a carrier in there they're going to take the two destroyers cruiser back and instead they are going to produce with eight two dreadnoughts instead all right now let's place the two dreadnoughts on the board uh a lot or looking at the, the command restriction for fleet. Sorry about that. All right, so they are going to place two dreadnoughts in this system. So I don't know what they're thinking, but that's a pretty formidable force building up. Uh, not many ships though, there are not many ground forces around or fighters, but two dreadnoughts, nothing to sniff at. All right, that's the Sardic Noir taking an action. Up next, the Arboric again. And the Arboric are going to take a tactical action. So, with that token, let's find out where on the board uh, they're going to activate and see what it is they're going to do. All right, so they're going to activate this system here. They're going to move in the Dreadnought with one ground force, which they will promptly then drop onto that planet. Uh, taking it over. All right, so they're going to, oh, and I gotta put a token here because there's no ground forces. So they're gonna take over that planet face down. Let's add it to their tableau. All right, that adds a little more oomph to the plant race uh, uh, empire. And there we go, that's added on. That's the action for Arboric. Up next is the Federation of Soul again. Now, as the Federation of Soul, we have no 
uh, command tokens in our strategy or our tactic zone, so we can't take either of them. We do not have any action cards, or yeah, action cards that say action, so we can't do that. Uh, so basically, we're on to having to play the strategy cards. We're going to be playing the trade strategy card. So we gain three trade goods. So that's all right. We're going to gain three of them and place them in our trade goods spot, of course, uh, on our player mat. So I'm kind of doing that off to the side. Uh, and then we replenish commodities. Well, we have four commodities. Uh, and of course, we have to trade those to other people. So I will do that here. And uh, then we're going to come back and see what we're going to do. All right. So it says choose any number of other players uh, to do this. I'm going to say nobody. Nobody's been nice with the trade. Uh, so the only one that could spend a command token uh, would be Sardaq Noir because they don't have any commodities, but they're not going to bother. So that's going to end the trade action for the Federation of Saul. Uh, up next again is going to be the Sardaq Noir. All right, and it's Sardaq Noir's turn, and they have decided to pass. They're not going to do anything, which takes us right into the Arboric then. The Arboric still have stuff they want to do, so they're going to spend a tactical... Uh, command token. Let's go out onto the board and see what they want to do with that. All right, well, they're doing something aggressive. They are going to activate this system here. They are going to move in two destroyers from this system here uh, and a cruiser. So they are trying to blockade, I guess, this planet from anyone else going in there. Maybe they're laying claim to it by the look of it. Uh, and there you have it. So that's really their action. They can move uh, stuff in from here, but their carriers can't move two, neither can their dreadnoughts move three. So that's going to end off their action. That was basically it. They don't get to take the planet though, because they don't have any ground forces landed there. But they're effectively blocking that off pretty well. All right, up next, Federation of Soul. Uh, and I guess we don't really need to go to them because we have no tactical command tokens, no strategy command tokens. We don't have a strategy card to play. We have nothing else we can do. So we're just going to come right back. So we're going to pass. Sardic has passed. Up next again will be the Arboric. Do the Arboric want to take another action? Well, let's find out or whether they're going to pass. And, and well. here is where we get into in a true multiplayer game, there would be all kinds of negotiations going on. The Arboric have a command token and they're trying to convince the Federation of Seoul to exchange trade goods. Now, if we exchange trade goods, if I give Arboric, say, three trade goods, they turn in, or sorry, commodities, they will turn into trade goods for the Arboric. If the Arboric gives us three of their commodities, they turn into three trade goods. The Arboric would like some, <laughs> they would like some trade goods from us. We would also like some from them. Uh, we've kind of struck a deal and I think we're only going to exchange two commodities. So I'm going to give two of my commodities to the Arboric. The Arboric are going to give two of their commodities to me. So let me just get this organized here. So we've got a total of four commodities. The Arboric have a total of three commodities to uh, trade. And so we've negotiated two for two. So these two are going to come from the Arboric to us turning into trade goods. We are going to also give them two uh, which turned into trade goods for them. All right, so that was negotiation. That wasn't really an action. That was just some kind of negotiation. And then the Arbrook are going to then take an action. They haven't passed yet, so they will take an action. So let's see what they're going to do on the board. And of course, part of the negotiations is we will exchange trade goods if we promise not to kill each other in the next round. You think that's going to happen? Who knows? We'll find out. So let's go to the board. The Arbrook are going to activate another system. And the system. system they're going to activate is this one here. They do have a spaceport here. They could build five units. Remember, they cannot build ground forces. They only have two trade goods to spend uh, for that that we just gave them from Federation of Seoul. 
So let's go and find out what they're going to build uh, with the trade, the two production from trade goods that they have. All right, and what the Arbrook are going to build is two destroyers costing two. So that's the two trade goods that they got from Federation of Soul spent. So let's go put those two destroyers out on the board. All right, and they're going to be placing their two destroyers here. They tell me, uh, Federation of Soul, it's because they want to not have uh, hostilities moving in from the bug people. Yeah, we believe them. <laughs> and of course, they're now within striking distance of this system. All right, that's the Arbrook. Now, they're, only, they're the only ones who haven't passed. They will pass now. And so coming up next, we're going to transition right into the status phase. And now we're into the status phase. And the first thing we do is score objectives, starting with the speaker, which is the Sardic Noir. Uh, Yes, they're, they're going first anyway. So Sardic Noir, are they going to score any public objectives? Uh, do they own two technology and two colors? No, they don't. They can't spend resources or influence. They don't have enough trade goods. They're not going to get a public objective. However, they are going to score one of their two secret objectives. And it is have three space docks on the game board for a victory point. They do indeed have three space docks out on the board they get a victory point for that. And I'm just going to discard the card. I think you're supposed to keep it, put a token on it, but we'll just remember that they did that. All right, that is the Sardic Noir. Now, do the Arboric have any uh, public objectives? They don't have this one. They don't have spending eight resources or eight influence or five trade goods. And I forgot to look at their <laughs> secret objectives. So let's uh, see what they've got, and I'll come right back and see if they're going to score a secret objective. And no, they will not be scoring any secret or public objectives. Up last, Federation of Soul. We are going to claim this one. Spend five trade goods. That's why we wanted to make that deal with the Arboric. Uh, it might cost us in the long run if they attack us, but we do have five trade goods now. We're going to spend them. And that means we're going to claim another victory point right on. We're going to go up to three. And we also are able to claim this one, which is control for cultural planets. We have five. It's going to give us another victory point. So at the end of, uh, let's see, scoring objectives, it looks like Federation of Soul is four. The bug people, Sardak Nor, have won the plants are at zero. All right, and next up is drawing action cards. All right, I've zoomed out quite a bit because we're gonna be able to want to read them. Now we do have Neural Motivator, which is during the status phase, which, ah, and now I've forgotten the plant people. <laughs> we'll get right to them right after drawing action cards, I promise. They have the mitosis ability, which is at the start of the status phase. They get to place a ground force unit on any planet they control. All right, but we're going to do action cards first out of order. I apologize. All right, so up first will be Sardic Noir. They're going to get one action card because they do not have neural motivators. The Arboric also get one, but we, Federation of Soul, get two because of neural motivators. We're going to come right back. And we're going to see what our two action cards are. All right, so I've had a look at our uh, adversaries' cards and put them in their pile. Remember, you can have seven uh, action cards at once. So what did we get? Shields holding. Before you assign hits to your ships during a space combat, cancel up to two hits. <laughs> oh, I like that. That could be coming in handy next round. And we have tactical bombardment action. Choose one system that contains one or more of your units that have bombardment, which would be our dreadnoughts or war suns, or flagship exhaust each planet controlled by other players in that system. Wow, another good card. And I should see how many we have now. We've got, whoops, as I put them. So we have one, two, three, four. We have six action cards now. All right. Uh, that was the draw action cards. Now let's go on to the player area and add that one ground force unit for the Arboric. That is their special ability and I keep forgetting it. So let's just do that now before we get into the next step which would be removing command counters. All right so the Arboric get to take a ground force. Now they can place this on any uh, uh, planet they control and so I think they are going to go ahead 
and place it. Where would they want to place it? I think they're going to place it. Oh man, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. I think they're going to place it right here with this, with their star dock. So they got two ground units there now. That's their special ability. All right, now it is remove command counter. So I'm going to go ahead and take all these command counters for all the races off the board. They go back into the reserve. They don't go back to the play mats. So let me uh, do that right now. All right, and I have now removed all the command counters from the board. Next, it's gain and redistribute command counters. So we're going to start with the Stardust Noir, and then we'll go the Arbrook and ending off with Federation of Soul. And of course, Federation of Soul, we have that handy dandy ability called Versatile. While you gain command tokens, during the status phase, gain one additional command token. So instead of two, we get three. So let's go ahead and start with the Sardaq. All right, they get two. They're gonna put one in Tactical, and they are gonna put one in Fleet, which now means they can have Fleet size of capital ships of four instead of three. Ha! Huh, just like the plant people, the Arboric. All right, up next, Arboric gets two. All right, pretty simple for the Arboric. They are going to put both of them into the tactic spot. All right, next, Federation of Soul, and we get three. All right, and yeah, I guess we're going to put two in tactics. I'm almost tempted to bump our fleet size up to four, but I think we're going to put one in strategy. Yeah, things get a little interesting now. Okay, that was uh, gaining and redistributing command tokens. And we can redistribute them too, so you can move stuff around, but I'm going to leave it as is. Now we're going to ready all of our planet cards. Then we would repair any damaged units, any two-hit units that only have one hit on them. And then we're going to refresh the strategy cards. So I'm going to... Uh, Basically, I'm going to refresh all of our planet cards for all races, and then we're going to end off by taking a look at the strategy cards, and then an uh, overview of the game board. It'll be the end of round three and the end of this episode for today. Okay, so I've refreshed all of the strategy cards, and Diplomacy has three trade goods on it. Politics, one. Everything else has been used in this round. So I guess let's take one final look at the uh, sector of space or the galaxy here at the moment. And we're going to wrap up this episode round the end of round three for today. So things heating up nicely. We've got uh, the Federation of Soul now four victory points. Oh, and damn it. Damn it. I forgot and I'm going to do it now. Oh, damn it. See, forgetting things, getting complicated. I forgot we're supposed to. Uh, reveal a public objective, which we didn't do, so I'm doing it right now. Develop a weaponry status. Own two unit upgrade technologies is worth a victory point. All right, that is the new level one objective. Sorry about that. Oh, man. This game is getting a little more complicated <laughs> as we play along. And, uh, yeah, much more stuff to keep in my mind. So, sorry I forgot that. That is the new... Uh, class one or level one objective available. All right, now let's take a look at the end of the galaxy status. We have the plant people blockading this planet here a little bit. We've got a major escalation of forces here. I don't know if the plant dudes decide to attack me. That is going to get ugly. We have a destroyer, six or five fighters. Yeah, it's going to be ugly. <laughs> so anyway, this is Twilight Imperium, fourth edition. Obviously, much better played with multiple people and not playing a kind of solitaire like I'm doing here on my channel, but I really wanted to show you how this game operates. The length of the game as well. So I'm going to do a complete playthrough. It will probably be quite a few episodes. Uh, no stranger to long series. I think my uh, quest for Middle Earth went like 18 and... Uh, Dawn of the Zed, second edition, I think went like 30 some episodes. So this will probably be a pretty lengthy one. Uh, if you want to stick with me, that'd be great. And uh, so thanks for your comments, your subscriptions and likes. And like I said before, my strategy may suck <laughs> as I'm just trying to wrap my head around all the different races and the things they need to do with secret objectives, public objectives and uh, such forth. All right, so thanks so much for watching along. And we'll see you in the continuation of Twilight Imperium 4th Edition three-player game as long as my brain doesn't just explode while I try to make sure I figure everything out. So again, I apologize in advance for all the little errors and oversights. 
but I'm doing my best. So thanks so much, and we'll see you in the next episode.